Hello everyone. So for this lecture, we will be talking about double integrals in polar coordinates. Before we start our discussion, let's have some quick activities first. Evaluate the given integral on the screen using dy dx as the order of integration. You may pause this video for a while and try to solve it. Now, let's try to solve the same double integral, but this time using dx dy as the order of integration. Again, you may pause this video for a while to try and solve the problem. You may notice that in either order of integration, the given double integral cannot be evaluated. There are some double integrals in Cartesian coordinates that are hard to evaluate, but they can be evaluated easily as double integrals in polar coordinates. By the end of this video, we hope that you can do the following. First, express a double integral in terms of polar coordinates. Next, establish an iterated double integral in polar coordinates. And lastly, compute a double integral in polar coordinates. Let's recall the conversion from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates and vice versa. A point in Cartesian coordinate is given by the ordered pair x, y, while a point in polar coordinates is given by the ordered pair r, theta, where r is the distance between the origin and the point x, y, and theta is the angle between the ray formed by the origin and x, y, and the positive x axis. The following can be used to convert equations in Cartesian to polar coordinates. Now, let's consider the double integral of f of x, y, dA over the region R. How are we going to convert this double integral in Cartesian coordinates to a double integral in polar coordinates? Step 1. Express the function in terms of polar coordinates. That is, each x and y in the function should be converted into r and theta. Step 2. Express the equations defining the region r in terms of polar coordinates. You may use the given conversions a while ago. And lastly, this is very important that in polar coordinates, dA is equal to r dr d theta. For our convenience in Math 28, we only use dr d theta as the order of integration in polar. So now, we have the double integral of f of x, y over r as a double integral of g of r theta or dr d theta over r in polar. So for our first example, Let's evaluate the double integral of e to the x plus y squared dA over r, where r is the region in place by the circle x squared plus y squared plus 1. So first, let f of x, y equals e to the x squared plus y squared. Recall that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So you have g of r theta equals e to the r squared. For the region r, we have x squared plus y squared equals 1. Again, x squared plus y squared is r squared, so we will just have r squared equals 1, which is simply r equals 1. So our region r is the region imposed by the circle r equals 1 and theta equals 0. To theta equals 2 pi. That's the figure shown on the right. So now, we have to compute for this double integral in terms of polar coordinates. But, we have to change dA into r dr d theta. So, now we'll have the double integral of e to the r squared r dr d theta from r equals 0 to r equals 1, and from theta equals 0 to theta equals 2 pi.
So first, we are going to solve for the inner integral, which is integral of e to the r squared r dr, evaluated from 0 to 1. So for this inner integral, we are going to use integration by substitution. So we let omega to be equal to r squared. So we have the differential of omega equals to r times the differential of r. So we have integral of e to the r squared r dr as integral of e to the omega d omega, which is just simply one half of e to the omega plus c. Changing omega back to r squared, we have one half of e to the r squared plus c. So now we have integral of one half e to the r squared evaluated from zero to one d theta from 0 to 2 pi. So we will have 1 half of the integral of e to the 1 minus e to the 0 d theta from 0 to 2 pi. Take note that e to the 1 is equal to e and e to the 0 is equal to 1. And e minus 1 is constant with respect to theta. So we will have 1 half times e minus 1 times the integral of d theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. So, again, we have 1 half of e to the minus 1 times theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. So, finally, our answer will be pi times e minus 1. For our second example, we consider the region R enclosed by the circle x plus y squared equals what? The line x equals y and the x axis. We evaluate the double integral of the square root of x squared plus y squared dA over R. So first, we let f of xy equals square root of x squared plus y squared. We call that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So we'll have g of r theta, which is equal to square root of r squared, which is just simply r. For our region, we have first the circle x squared plus y squared equals 1. So from our previous example, that is just r equals 1. Now we have the line x equals to y. Remember, the tan theta is equal to y over x. So we have tangent theta equals y over x equals 1. So we have theta equals pi over 4. And lastly, the x-axis is just theta equals 0. The region R is shown on the figure on the right. So now, we have to change dA into R, dR, and theta. So, a double integral in polar coordinates is a beam. A double integral of R and R, dR, d theta from R equals 0 to R equals 1 and from theta equals 0 to theta equals pi over 4, which is simply the double integral of R squared dr d theta evaluated from 0 to 1 and evaluated from theta equals 0 to theta equals 5 or 4. So, getting the inner integral, we'll have the integral of r cube over 3 evaluated from 0 to 1 d theta evaluated from theta equals 0 to theta equals 5 over 4. So we'll have integral of 1 per t theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 4. Take note that 1 per is constant with respect to r. So we'll have 1 per of the integral of t theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 4. So this is the simply 1 per theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 4. So we'll just have 
one third of pi over four, which is pi over twelve. So first, let's recall the notion of double integers as a ball in the base solid. Given a function f of x, y, greater than or equal to 0, over the region R, the double integral of f of x, y, t is over R, gives the volume of the solid bounded above by the surface given by the function f and below by the region R. In this double integral, the area of integration is given by a, which is equal to double integral of dA over R. And f of x, y will be our height function. So for our third example, set up the double integral in polar coordinates that will solve for the volume of the solid in the first octant, which is enclosed by the graph of z, which is equal to 4 minus x squared minus y squared. The graph of z equals 4 minus x squared minus y squared is a parabola which is given by this one. So first, we want to find the height of function of our double integral. So here, our height would be from the bottom of the rectangular piece up to the top of the rectangular piece. So the bottom of the rectangular piece is always 0, z equals 0, while its top is always z equals 4 minus x squared minus y squared. So the height will be equal to 4 minus x squared minus y squared. But since we want our double integral to be in polar coordinates, so we convert this equation in Cartesian coordinates to, in, to an equation to polar coordinates. So we have 4 minus y squared. Now, we go into the region of integration. So here, the region of integration is a quarter of a circle. So we have this circle is given by the equation y equals square root of 4 minus x squared, which is simply r equals 2. So our area of integration would be the double integral of r d r d theta from r equals 0 to r equals 2, and from theta equals 0 to theta equals pi over 2. To get the volume of the solid that we are interested, we just incorporate the height. So the volume, which is, is given by the double integral of 4 minus r to r dr theta from r equals 0 to r equals 2, and from theta equals 0 to theta equals pi over 2. For the summary of this lecture, so how again we convert the double integral in Cartesian coordinates to a double integral to polar coordinates. So first, we express the function in terms of polar coordinates. Consecutively, we express the equations defining the region R in terms of polar coordinates as well, using the conversion that we learned a while ago. And lastly, we change the A to R D R D theta. So we'll have this double integral given below. For more examples, we'll try these two examples given here. So that's all. Thank you. If you want to learn more about topics on Math 28, check out these videos. And don't forget to answer the exercises found in the description below. Have a good day! Bye!